South Carolina. A charming city with a rich history and culture, it was founded in 1670 and is located on the Atlantic coast of South Carolina. Charleston was one of the most important cities in the colonial south because it was a major center for trade and commerce, and it was also a major slave port. Charleston played a significant role in the American Revolution, and it was the site of the first shots of the Civil War. Stating that this city is haunted by ghosts, by its tumultuous past, by the restless spirits of its former residents, would be an understatement. But today, Charleston is cited for its beauty and its history. It's a popular tourist destination, and it's known for its well-preserved historic district of cobblestone streets, horse-drawn carriages, and pastel antebellum houses. And one can't leave out its vibrant food scene, serving everything from traditional southern cuisine to international fare. We visited Charleston for the Labor Day holiday extended weekend. We flew Breeze Airways for the first time, a new U.S. domestic budget airline, which I've done a separate vlog on and you should definitely check out. I'll also leave a link in the description. Once we arrived, we took a quick stroll around and then headed towards the French Quarter, which is the right half of the wall portion of the town in honor of the French Huguenot Protestants who fled Catholic France in the 1680s and immigrated to the new English colony of Carolina. We also took a quick look around Joe Riley Waterfront and then on to get some dinner. We ate at the Fleet Landing restaurant, and there's a reason why they have over 9,000 top reviews. Their food is amazing. We split the rich she crab soup with blue crab roe and cherry, and then Manny had the pansier grouper, and I had the low country seafood pasta. Everything was amazing, including the view. Good morning everyone and welcome to Charleston, South Carolina. If you aren't familiar with Charleston, South Carolina in the United States, this is a city that is just brimming with so much history from the Revolutionary War to the Civil War. Um, every step that you take here at Charleston, there's a plaque and tells you about something historic. So lots and lots to see. So really excited to be here. Not only was I excited for our first full day to take in Charleston's rich history, starting our day walking through some of their stunning neighborhoods, but I was ready to take part in some of their rich cuisine for breakfast. So this house was built in 1765 um, by a revolutionary patriot. We stopped at Callie's Hot Little Biscuit. Thank <laughs> you. 
We had the buttermilk biscuit sandwich with sausage, egg, and pimento cheese. Instantly falling apart and really hot, so, so good. So we just grabbed a quick bite to eat, and I have to say the food in Charleston is amazing. Um, even if you just came here for the food, the food here is top notch. heading into a farmer's market that takes place on Saturdays here in Charleston um, every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, but being here in Charleston and just with their hospitality I'm really excited to go and check it out This embassy suite looks like a castle. <laughs> Amazing. things that Charleston is most famous for is actually at the start of the Civil War here in the United States and it actually started at Fort Sumter 
and we're not looking to go to Fort Sumter. Um, it is across the water, so I'm going to show you. <laughs> it is over this way. Um, but you can take a ferry, and actually the ferry ride is included in your ticket, um, and spend the day there. And I know it's very interesting. Um, it's just not something that we're looking to do in our plans. For right now, we're just enjoying kind of walking around the city. But if you're interested, um, you know, it is definitely pretty interesting. So one of the things about the fountain that I do find to be quite unusual and actually have never seen elsewhere is the fact that you're allowed to go into the fountain. Um, that's not usually allowed, but here it is. <laughs> We then walked over to the Old Sleeve Mart Museum, which tells the dark history of Charleston's role in the domestic interstate slave trade from 1856 to 1863. In 1808, the country banned its participation in the international slave trade, which then led to the creation of a domestic slave trading system, in which Charleston became one of the major enslaved collecting and selling centers. This building may possibly be the only known building used as a slave auction site in South Carolina, still in existence. The Old Slave Mart was once a part of a larger collection of buildings which consisted of a yard enclosed by a high brick wall, a four-story brick building known as a barracoon, a slave jail, a kitchen, and a dead house. Auctions of the enslaved ended in November 1863. So this is America's oldest liquor store, established in 1686. So these are the famous Charleston Rainbow Row houses here. Um, there's not really a huge significance about them except for the fact that they were bought out by someone right after the wars um, in hopes of basically bringing Charleston back. Um, she happened to buy six of the houses and she actually never finished restoring them. Um, somebody else took it over and the rest is history. But basically, they were kind of the example here for Charleston to try to get Charleston back as being seen as like the city. Um, and sure enough, it worked because if you walk around the neighborhoods here in Charleston, the buildings are amazing. The architecture is gorgeous. And Charleston <laughs> gets really loud. Um, Charleston does a really great job of, you know, preserving their history here. Um, and their buildings. I mean, if you come to Charleston, just walking around the neighborhoods is something. Um, they might be somebody's houses, so careful when you're stopping and looking in windows or taking pictures. But, you know, every house has its history here. Um, and they're just, they're absolutely stunning. They're really, really gorgeous. And it's just a nice, peaceful way to spend the day strolling the streets here. <laughs> At the beginning of the 18th century, South Carolina's colonial government raised fortified walls and moats around the center of urban Charleston. These defensive works constrained the town's growth for more than 20 years, but then quietly vanished before a burst of civic expansion in the mid-1730s. At the turn of the 21st century, 
some people in the community began to realize that the development in urban Charleston was literally churning up physical remnants of the city's militarized past that remain underground. Much is still a mystery today, but in 2005, a group was established to work towards finding and preserving Charleston's history. Honestly, it feels like every house has a plaque that tells something <laughs> about um, each house. What's really cool about here in Charleston is that a lot of these houses are preserved from the 1700s. We don't have a lot of that in the United States and even though that seems like a baby to you know someone visiting from Europe, um, for us Americans I mean that's our history and it seems old to us so it's really cool. Um, in America a lot of our things are shiny and new so we don't hold on to our history and our historic buildings. So seeing them here in Charleston how beautiful they are it's pretty great. So this brick building here, um, this is the Hayward Washington building. It dates back to circa 1772. Now Hayward was a member of the Continental Congress. Those were the delegates who went to uh, Philadelphia to work on our Declaration of, of Independence. Um, and then Washington, who obviously was the United States first president, once he was president, he actually came and stayed in this house. And I think he stayed in the house for like a, for like a week while he toured around the United States and specifically here, obviously Charleston, um, as he was making his way, I guess, through all the colonies at that time, then states. Um, but yeah, he stayed in Hayward's house for a week, I think, um, to check out Charleston. And so it's called the Hayward Washington House. So like so many things here in Charleston, the Hayward Washington House is a um, National Historic Landmark um, and it's a museum. So there's tours that says Monday through Saturday from 10 to 5 on Sunday 12 to 5 um, and there's an admission of course to go in um, but really cool. I think really cool that we have these things preserved and that we know someplace that George Washington stayed. Um, and that it was one of our official delegates from the Continental Congress. We made a quick stop at Carmela's Cafe and Dessert Bar for a cannoli, strawberry milkshake, and a lemon sorbetto. We highly recommend, and it wouldn't be our last time visiting Carmela's. We then headed for a look at the United States Custom House, a building associated with importing and exporting goods in and out of the country. The construction of the building began in 1852, but was interrupted in 1859 due to the cost and the possibility of South Carolina's secession from the Union. After the Civil War, construction was restarted in 1870 and completed in 1879. From there, our nose followed the heavenly scent across the street and into Charleston's Candy Kitchen, also known as Savannah's Candy Kitchen, which is full of family recipes of Southern delicacies. And then we crossed the street again into the Charleston City Market. The market was established in 1807 to sell meat, fruit, vegetables, and fish. At first, the market was called the Center Market, and stalls at the center rented for 25 cents per week. But it was additionally unofficially known as the Slaves Market, because slaves and free blacks sold their goods there as well. It also served as a recruiting station during the Civil War. 
In 1973, the market was placed on the National Register of Historic Places and was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1975. Today, at the market, you'll find t-shirts, crafts, and sweet grass baskets made by the Gullah Artesians out of marsh grass that thrives in the sandy soil of the Low Country. And if you're unfamiliar with the Gullah community, they are an African-American ethnic group who are descendants of Africans who were enslaved on the rice, indigo, and sea island cotton plantations of the lower Atlantic coast. Many came from the rice growing regions of West Africa and due to the nature of their enslavement on an isolated island and coastal plantations, it created a unique culture with deep African roots that are clearly visible in the Gullah communities, arts, crafts, food, music, and language. Gullah is a Creole language spoken in the Low Country area and began as a simplified form of communication amongst people who spoke many different languages. The Gullah ancestors are also responsible for bringing to America items imported from Africa during the slave trade such as okra, rice, yams, peas, hot peppers, peanuts, sesame seeds, sorghum, and watermelon. At the Charleston City Market, the sweet grass baskets are regarded among the nation's most prized cultural souvenirs. We then went up to the rooftop in the market pavilion where we grabbed some drinks and the tuna stack appetizer. There, we headed for the Seafood Oyster House Raw Bar for dinner, where Manny had the fish tacos and I had the shrimp and grit.
The next day, we headed to Toast All Day to grab some breakfast to go. We ordered the sweet tea chicken biscuit and added egg to it with home fries. We took it to go over to the back door cafe located inside the Mills House, which is a Hilton Collection hotel and really cool if you're looking for a place to stay. There we also grabbed ourselves some coffee. Hibernian Hall was constructed in 1840 and is the only remaining intact building associated with the National Democratic Convention of 1860 and served as its headquarters for the faction of Democrats who were in support of Stephen A. Douglas. The indecision and in-party disputes, according to the majority of historians, led to a split in the Democratic National Party and ultimately led to the election of the Republican candidate, a relatively unknown lawyer named Abraham Lincoln. Because of this brief but vital role in history, Hibernian Hall was named a National Historic Landmark in 1973 and also garnered the honor of housing the South Carolina Department of Archives and History Summary. From there, we spent more time just wandering around the spectacular manicured neighborhoods. Washington building. Now this right here is set up for the horses where you would come and tie up your horse and then these stairs for you to get down from your horse. What's really interesting about these residential streets here in Charleston is just how quiet they are. I'm sure the residents are really happy about that part of it. Um, it's not really interesting for them because <laughs> it's their house. But for us as visitors, um, yeah, they're quiet and not only that, but Every single house is really well preserved. Many of these houses are dated back to the 1700s or circa uh, 1801 ish, but they've done a really good job with the history. I mean, every house pretty much you can find who lived here and what they did. And it's definitely really interesting. I'm not sure. I mean, we have other cities that obviously have preserved some of our colonial times in America, but I think that this city does a really magnificent job of doing so. We've now walked over to the battery and it's right on the water. Over here, it's right on the edge of Charleston. Um, it's a little park here and you'll find here plaques, you'll find some cannons, lots of history. So we're gonna go check it out.
So the last plaque talked about how there was a pirate problem here in Charleston and they actually hung here um, in this area 30 pirates. Um, now coming from Florida we're very familiar with pirates. Um, if you're a football fan you've heard of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So really familiar with, uh, with the pirate issues that happened in the United States early on. So here in the park, there's definitely <clears throat> a lot of thanks to the revolutionary generals um, here, like this plaque right here behind me is giving thanks to someone. Um, it dates back to 1776. made it back to the oldest liquor store. In America, that is. After that, we went to check out the Vendue, Charleston's Art Hotel, another really amazing hotel, and R, the rooftop. The rooftop bar that was voted best rooftop bar by Charleston City Paper since 2007. It was so busy on the rooftop, so we headed back to Carmela's Cafe and Dessert Bar for another strawberry shake and lemon sorbetto. Our final stop in Charleston was for dinner at Pugin's Barbecue, and all was really good and we highly recommend. So our weekend in Charleston made for an amazing time that was full of history and incredible food. Stay tuned as we visit Los Angeles, California, and I visit Disneyland for the very first time. See you next time.